finishing up lesson 10.3 by learning how to divide rational expressions. Now remember part one of lesson 10.3 was multiplying rational expressions. So it just makes sense that today we're going to finish up this lesson by dividing rational expressions. There's your heading. Please copy that down. Dividing rational expressions. Lesson 10.3 and as always be sure and include today's date. All right. Be sure and include today's date. And let's continue on. Now, today's lesson will be short, okay? Dividing rational expressions is identical to multiplying rational expressions except for just one small difference. You simply have to flip or invert the second fraction and then change the division sign to multiplication. Guys, you know what I'm talking about. Remember back in elementary school, one half divided by five thirds was the same thing as one half times, and then you flip the fraction, three fifths. You do not flip the first fraction. The first fraction stays the same. However, you do flip the second fraction and you change division to multiplication, okay? So that's all we're going to do today. From there, you just use the multiplication rules or steps that you learned yesterday. Okay? So um, let's try a couple of these and we'll finish with the video. It's a pretty short video today. All right, let's start off with this problem here first. I'm going to drag this one down here and get it out of the way. All right, here we go. Now, <coughs> before we go any further, let's take the second fraction. Let's flip it and change the division to multiplication. Now, remember... Right now, this fraction is not a fraction, so let's make it a fraction like that, all right? Now, let's rewrite our problem by, remember, not flipping the second fraction and then flipping, <coughs> flipping the second fraction and change this division to multiplication, all right? Now, we, have, we no longer have a division problem. Okay, we now have a multiplication problem, and we learned steps yesterday on how to solve um, <coughs> multiplying two rational expressions. So here we go. The first thing you do is you factor every numerator and denominator that's factorable. This is a one-termer. This is a one-termer, a monomial, so they cannot be factored. This is a binomial, however. There's nothing we can pull out, and we do not have perfect squares or perfect cubes. So this cannot be factored. The only part that maybe can be factored is this right here. Okay, that's not even for sure. So let's see if we can factor that not that numerator, okay? Um, here we go. Okay, um, there's nothing common I can pull out. So I'm left with a trinomial. This power here is supposed to be twice as big as this power here, and it is. I have a lead coefficient of 1. That's good. So what two numbers would multiply together? Give me a positive 2. When add together, give me a negative 3. Well, if I multiply these two numbers, I get a positive 2. If I combine these two numbers, I get a negative 3. So the factorization would be x negative 2, x negative 1. All right. So let's get rid of that, and we'll try to get rid of this here the best we can. And let's go ahead and pull this up top here to take the place of that numerator. And now step one is done. Next we're going to cross cancel and reduce and then multiply and we're finished. So let's see here, students. I've got an x negative 1 here that cancels with an x negative 1. And I think that's it. Please remember, do not cancel a 2 and a 4 like this or an x with an x. You cannot do that because you have a binomial here and a monomial here. Okay, you have to you have to reduce or cancel binomials with binomials or uh, monomials with monomials, etc. Okay, so I'm left with this. I've got a one here. There's nothing here, so I've got a one here and this here. So x negative two times one is x negative two, and four x squared times one is four x squared. And then I get a lot of students like to try to cancel here. There is no canceling you can do. You are finished. Okay. 